So let's return to our top story, the U.S. presidential election, which could be one of the most momentous American elections in recent history. Voters face a choice between a new chapter electing the country's first woman president and first commander-in-chief of Indian, Jamaican, African heritage, or turning the page back for a second bite of Donald Trump's promise to make America great again. America's choice obviously matters to the wider world. Let's listen to the final pitches from the two candidates. We don't have to settle for weakness and incompetence and decline and decay. <laughs> That's a nice word, decay. That's what's happening. That's a nice word, decay. Can you imagine? And nobody will question it because it's true. With your vote tomorrow, we can fix every single problem our country faces and lead America and the world to new heights of glory. But indeed, think of that statement, how beautiful that is. New heights of glory, that's what's going to happen. When we win the election and we're really well, look, it, the ball's in our hand. All we have to do is get out the vote tomorrow. You get out the vote, they can't do anything about it. We win. But I think I heard somebody say it's like 900, maybe a little more than 900 rallies. And, you know, rarely do they ever catch me making even a little mistake. I go through rally after rally, 10, 20, 30, and then I say the wrong. They say, he's cognitively impaired. No, we're not. I'll let you know when that time happens. It could happen, but hopefully it's not going to be for a long time. But you've given your time, your money, and your whole heart for this cause, and your support means more than anything you can even understand. It's, uh, it's amazing. I love you all. You're very special. This is my last... My last rally, can you believe that the rallies, these big, beautiful rallies, there's never been anything like it, and there never will be anything like it, and it just happened. It caught on, and I think it caught on because our country's in trouble, and, you know, I happened to be a messenger that was able to tell you what you do, because most people understand it. Most people with common sense, we're the party of common sense, they understand it. But this is all you need to know, I mean... Joe and Kamala broke it, and I will fix it. I'll fix it fast. Pittsburgh! Are we ready to do this? Are we ready to vote? Are we ready to win? And that is, of course, Kamala Harris, and before her, a rather lengthy um, speech there from Donald Trump. Well, with voting now underway in earnest, how are people in Nigeria, Africa's most populous country, viewing this U.S. election? Well, for his perspective, I'm joined now in the studio by Professor Tunde Esson, Professor of International Relations with a focus on the history of African elections and democratic developments on the continent and beyond. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you, Charles. It's good to see you again. Lovely to see you as always. Yeah. How would you characterize this U.S. election as you watch it from here in Nigeria? <laughs> it's quite interesting. I mean, a colorful personality, Donald Trump, you know, who has been in the race for nine years. You know, he was in office for four years. And thereafter, you know, he lost to Joe Biden. And now he's trying to come back as colorful as ever, 78, you understand? He may be comical in some of his attitude. He may be dramatic in some of his attitude. But one thing is sure, you cannot take away the fact that he's a determined, you understand, gentleman man who desires to get what he wants and using all means available, legal means available to get it. And of course, Kamala Harris, a child of history, you understand? I mean, a dramatic turnaround came around for her just 16 weeks ago. That's when she entered the pitch against somebody who has been mm. there for nine years. 16 weeks, effectively. If you look at it, if you come, put this week together, it will be 17 well, can weeks. we see images of Kamala Harris? That's yeah. who we are talking about, not Donald Trump yeah, yeah. at the moment. You understand? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's quite interesting, you know, 
looking at her, and she's doing very, very well. Mm. You understand? And I'm extremely confident at the general before. And of course, the first time in the Senate, from there, he went on to be the vice president of America. You know, that the first woman vice president, the first woman of color to be vice president. And now she's desiring to be the first woman of color, the first woman to be president of about the most powerful, the most influential country in the world as at the moment. Mm. And it, that's quite interesting. That's the way I think I look at it. And that's the way I think many analysts, international relations analysts look at it. And that's the way I think it, 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 that's what, the perspective of a lot of Nigeria, the influence of America is quite awesome. Mm. But, quite but of Nigeria. course, uh, you, you, you mentioned, I mean, I, th there are, from what I've observed, um, mixed feelings towards Kamala Harris here in Nigeria, yeah. because while some may be keen on her, yeah. in preference to Donald Trump yeah. when it comes to things like immigration, yeah. um, others, such as religious groups, yeah. are opposed to her campaign agenda because... They believe she supports abortion and LGBTQ rights. Oh, well, yeah, it depends on your perspective and the understanding of it. I believe that because there is this cultural and sociocultural perspective from mm. African perspective, and of course from the religious perspective, we Christians and all that. But uh, of interest to me, I have never heard of any church that. Trump regularly attends. He has never identified with any Absolutely. church. That's, 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 you get what I'm saying? That is uh, why it's so mysterious. To, and, and <laughs> very, very yeah. mysterious. You understand? The support the way he he what he said, which is very dramatic when he was running about nine years ago, was that, you know, he went to the church and said, my mom gave me a Bible. You understand? I remember very well. But be that as it may, he's a conservative, you understand? Uh, he's running under a conservative platform. And of course, if abortion and the woman right is a key issue in America and of course that that is in sync with some of the fundamentals that determines American elections and that naturally I mean is, there's a sync between that and some of our socio-cultural values particularly our perception of women and the issues that comes with abortion mm. actually in the religious circle so you can't take it away take that away from it but do you think that, that a lot of people support Donald Trump in Nigeria of course, a lot of people support Donald Trump from, you know, uh, what I would call misogynistic, you know, mm. <laughs> perception, if you get what I'm saying, which is very, very strong here yeah, in Africa. And uh, secondly, you know, he's a very, like I told you, he's a colorful politician, you understand, mm. uh, bombastic sometimes, you understand, uh, controversial sometimes. And that is not far away from some of our temperament, as it were, in Africa, mm. particularly among men. Uh, and understand? particularly among the African politicians. African, African politicians, <laughs> you understand? Well, I so mean, I, I expect Nigerians, though, mm. may not easily forget Mr. Trump's immigration immigration policy during yeah. his time mm. as president when he banned countries, including Nigeria, which obviously had an impact on this country, didn't it? Let me tell you what happened. A uh, no, few people will remember that, look, there was a statement purportedly made by Donald Trump when he said, Americans can no longer tolerate Nigerians, they should go back to their hearts. You mm. remember that? Mm. Although it was denied by the Secretary yes. of State and the Presidency in America, but nobody has actually confirmed otherwise to say this is not true. And of course, in 2018, he made a statement to say, look, after um, Americans can no longer tolerate all these people from these shit holes. You understand? African yeah. from the shit holes. And we're only using that term <laughs> because he used it, not, not that we would normally use such Yeah, you understand? Yes. And uh, it was a controversial system, mm. this statement, and a lot of people said, what? what do you mean by we're from shit holes? <laughs> you understand? I'm still trying to look at the definition of shit holes as it were, you understand? Because uh, we don't use shit in Africa to, as a term. It's an American term. Right. So maybe... maybe well, let's not <laughs> overuse it now on, yeah. on, on this program but yes I, I get the point that you're making um, but I mean in a broader sense yeah. it is interesting and I think you make a very good point there uh, it's it's a, a bit sort of almost mystifying how an unconventional candidate like Donald Trump is able to do so well in American politics I mean what are the conditions you think that have made America ripe for a candidate like Donald Trump? Are there specific socioeconomic conditions that gave birth to his candidacy, do you think? Well, uh, in human history, 
there are people who naturally grow up and uh, they, they appeal. They, they understand the human psychology more than anybody. You remember that Donald Trump was even a studio man. You remember that one mm -hmm. very well. He worked with uh, you know, Michael Jackson. He worked with one of the, some of the leading artists in America. And he understand he's a field man. He understand the temperament. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't want to even to believe that Donald Trump will do most of the things that he says. But he needs it. And it has been very useful to him. You understand? He was about the first American who never won an election, who never contested an election. And he threw his hat to the ring. And he won the presidency of America. You understand? Without he having any political experience. So you cannot take it away from him that he understands people's temperament, emotions, tendencies. And of course, that is in sync with it. Mm. And he's using it and he's helping. I mean, you can't take it away from him. You might call him a lot of things. You might say, you might use some kind of languages that have something to do with race and all that. But, you know, some people use something, do some things. But one thing is sure is a colorful politician. He indeed he is. Uh -huh. um, and if you were to call this election um, based on your assessment, because yeah. I know that beyond your own personal sentiment, yeah. you're also a, 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 a scientist who yeah. assesses yeah. these elections um, scientifically. Yeah. How would you call it? Well, close to, too, too close to call. Mm. I was looking at this, uh, you know, the first result was released 12 a.m. American time today. You understand? In Notch, New Hampshire, mm. and uh, each of them got three votes apiece. Absolutely. You understand? But, but the, there's a key element to that yeah, release of yeah. the votes. Mm -hmm. Although they got three each, yeah. there are only six voters there. Two of those. Yeah, but one of them yeah. who is, I mean, four of them are Republicans. Yes. So that meant that one Republican crossed over, crossed over. to the Democrats. Yes, and yes. that's quite interesting, isn't it's it? It's quite interesting. That mm. is to tell you, that will give you the picture, mm. the unfolding picture, as it were. You understand? So I think it's too close to call. It is interesting. It is, uh, you know, it is, uh, it is, there, there will be a lot of things coming out of this election. Mm. But whoever wins deserves to win. That's what it means. Yes, they would have worked very hard indeed. Yeah, they worked very hard. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Prof, I, I want to thank you very much. Thank indeed. you very much. Professor else. Tunde Sion is a professor of international relations with a focus on the history of African elections and indeed other elections beyond Africa, yeah. develop, democratic developments across the world. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank indeed. you. Thank you, Charles.